Josh here with another MJ Bots part to show off. Today I've got the MJ Bots Pi 3 hat. A Raspberry Pi daughter board that can power the Pi from bus voltage, breaks out four high speed CAN FD buses, one low speed bus, and provides a 1 kHz IMU to your Raspberry Pi. The Quad A1 uses this to command and monitor all 12 servos at 400 Hz while reading attitude, gyro rates, and accelerations all at the same frequency. It's available for sale at mjbots.com from the link in the description. When implementing a dynamic robotic system, you quickly discover that high bandwidth state monitoring and updates are critical to achieve robust performance. While motor controllers like the Modius controller internally have high bandwidth control loops, that only takes into account the individual joint and not the 3D position of the end effector, and has only limited options for complex trajectory following. For a legged robot with a fast walking gait, that could really matter. With a half second cycle time, the leg might only be in the air for 1 or 200 milliseconds. If the 3D inverse dynamics are run at 100 Hz, that means you can only send 10 or 20 position updates during the entire flight phase. That is hardly enough to command a smoothly varying trajectory, much less have any bandwidth for control within the 3D task space. By exposing four high speed CAN FD buses, the Pi 3 hat lets even a Raspberry Pi perform high rate control of robotic systems up to a kilohertz. At the same time, it contains a high quality MEMS IMU that is suited for being mounted directly in a robot chassis, the BMI 088. The filtering algorithms necessary to turn that into a robust attitude and angular rate, and a connector to attach an NRF 24L01 module for RF control. To demonstrate how to use the Pi 3 hat, let me show how to wire one up in the lab. Here at the lab bench we have everything we need to get started. The Pi 3 hat itself, a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, four QDD 100 servos, a power disk board, and associated cables. We'll start by bolting some standoffs to the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Then I'll attach the Raspberry or the Pi 3 hat to the Raspberry Pi. And I'll use some M2.5 4 millimeter long bolts to secure that in place. So that we can power everything up simultaneously, I'll use the power disk board and connect these XT30 power cables from it to all of the various devices. Each of these QDD100s I have previously assigned a unique identifier to, as evidenced by the post-it notes. Finally, we'll power the Pi 3 hat and Raspberry Pi from the power disk board as well. I'll connect the switch for the power disk board so it can be, we can turn power on and off. And it is off currently. Now I'll wire up the data connections. As is typical for a robot, the ground in our system is wired through the power bus, so the individual CAN cables should not have ground connectors, and these are all two-wire cables. So I will wire the IDs up to their similarly numbered bus, although that's not required. We'll put JC1, which is CAN bus 1, to the QD100 with ID1.
Now in a typical robot, you could daisy chain more servos off of this. An arbitrary number can be supported for any of the CAN buses. Um, finally, we'll attach a cable from the low speed port to the power disk board. The low speed port has the high common mode range, which allows it to be connected to things like the power disk board, which could have a different ground voltage. There. Now we'll plug in power and turn on the lab supply. And now we can turn on the switch and watch everything power up. The Raspberry Pi that I have here, the SD card, comes with the same software that's in the Pi 3 Hat bundle. Uh, and so it already has GuySoft's real-time Pi flashed onto it along with a host APD hotspot at 5 gigahertz. So we can switch over to the computer and connect to that. After connecting to the access point using the credentials listed in the documentation, we'll SSH to the IP address as configured from MJBots, 192.168.16.47. Then we'll sudo bash to get a root console. Now we can try running Pi 3 hat tool uh, to explore different options. Um, we can display the help and see what those are. The first thing we'll do is display the attitude using read at read at. That shows the attitude in quaternion format, the XYZ body rates in degrees per second, and the body accelerations in meters per second squared. Uh, next we can force a read from a CAN bus using read CAN. I'll specify bus 5 since I know the power disk board spews all the time it is powered. And sure enough there are packets from the power disk board waiting in the queue. The simple way to send packets is to use the write can or dash c command line option. Each instance takes a comma separated string consisting of first the bus to use, then the hex id, then a hex data string, I'll just do a simple query, and then optionally a flag. The only flag right now is to indicate that a reply is expected using lowercase r. Using that activates the waiting and timeout mechanisms of the library, which will attempt to wait for each such flag packet to be acknowledged before returning all the frames. So we do that, we'll see we get a response back from on bus 1 from servo ID 1 and there's the uh, st status response. We can do multiple at the same time, if we do write can 2, we get the first two servos, I'll queue up all four. Uh, I'll say the Pi Hat tool is merely a demonstration of how to use the the Pi 3 Hat library. Uh, I expect most applications to use the library rather than the command line tool. So we'll just do everything all at once. So this is writing a query to all four servos, reading from the power disk board, and reading the attitude. And we can see that it did all those things. We got responses back from servo. 1, 3, 2, and 4, and a bunch of packets from the power disk board and the attitude. The final option is to use the dash r flag, which runs the commands you specify at the maximum possible rate. Here that will be limited by how fast it can read the attitude, which turns out to be 400 hertz. It only displays the attitude despite querying everything. Uh, by default, the rate is 400 hertz, but we can use the dash dash attitude rate option to configure it from a, a number of options with a thousand being the highest. So we'll specify a thousand, run it, and see that yes it can read the attitude and send all the CAN frames at a thousand hertz. And that's it! If you want to learn more you can follow the link to GitHub in the description below and join the MJBots Discord to talk with fellow robot builders. Thanks!